Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to video four. What is global time dilation? Let's run our quick little example here. And we see a map where we have a few things bouncing. One of these I'm using a timeline to just move it up and down. The other one I'm using physics. And it's just, it uses a physics rubbery material. Down here I have a plus and minus button that's going to adjust my global time dilation. Now by default, my global time dilation is 1, and everything's going to be affected appropriately. Now if I lower this down to say 0.5, everything's going to be affected by basically half a global time dilation, or half speed. Anything that relies on a tick, not necessarily to do something, not necessarily the event tick node, but a tick, such as every frame, our physics object is supposed to be affected by physics, gravity, things like that, the friction, or in the right case of my right item, my timeline, which is set over five seconds to move a certain distance. Because my global time dilation is now in half, it's going to move half the distance now, rather than the full distance, and our physics are going to apply half the gravity and things like that, so it's going to look like it's running in slow motion. And as we ease this down to zero, you're going to end up with something like this. I have it set at 0.01 for a small bug, but it's going to go ahead and run super slow. If I was to take our global time dilation, let's actually set this to a minimum of zero and a max of five. And we'll set our minimum here to zero. And we'll go ahead and hit play again. And we'll move this down to zero. You'll notice you basically have completely stopped movement. And if we were to raise this up and do it properly, of course, I didn't add the... That's supposed to be 0.1. Oi. Okay. And we, of course, if we raised up our block to, let's say, 2, you now notice this is running twice as fast. This is going to process twice as fast. And our character itself is going to move twice as fast. And we drop this down our character is going to move slower. And that's because our character is using delta movement and things like that in order to determine how much force is used when it moves. And of course we move it even slower. And moving it to zero is basically going to stop it. Now there is a bug where basically your input, since your input's usually multiplied by your delta to give you a smooth form of input and a multiplic multiplic multipl a multiplication on your delta input on your input itself a scale basically your mouse movement is going to be extremely slow as you can see here that's why I had it set to 0 0.01 a usual workaround for this is just to have a flag if your delta time your global time gets down to zero just take your input for example if we were to go into our character uh, here and go into our character and we have our turn rate here, and we have our mouse look, axis value, and things like this. Multiply this, because right now it's coming in, as you can see, a current value of zero. That's because I'm not moving it, but also it's going to be a very, very small number because of our global time dilation. So what you'd want to do is change this to a, add, put a multiplication in here, set a flag. Hey, I now have set the di time dilation to nothing. Let's go and multiply this by something large like a hundred or a thousand and it'll give you your movement back properly. So now that we've explained what time dilation is, let's see how we use it. So you're going to find two nodes with your global time dilation. You're going to find a getter and a setter, and it's pretty simple. It's your normal get and sets. It is global, so you don't have to do it anywhere specific, and you basically just set it or get it. So in this case, I am when I click my plus, I'm getting my current dilation, adding 0.1 and setting it. And then for v viewing it, I'm simply getting it and converting it to a text. And that's it, that's all I'm doing here. And you'll notice when we run it, it's going to affect things evenly like my player, my timeline, and my physics object. Now one thing to keep in mind is time dilation definitely acts wonky at certain speeds, especially higher speeds or slower speeds for multiplayer. And as you can see on my physics object on the left, it definitely starts having an effect once we get to a high enough value. I've got mine capped. Well, I had it capped to 5. But as you notice, the more and more I move this up, you're going to end up starting to have issues because you're basically skipping things. Where the original item meant to go, let's say, a distance of 1. 
Now that I've multiplied it by 5, it's going to go a distance of 5, and you may end up missing things such as physics or line traces or collision and things like that may be effective. So keep that in mind when you're working with global time dilation. High values and super low values generally can cause issues. But for the most part, as long as you use it for something stylish and you don't use it for a lot of stuff, it works great as you can see here. That is what our global time dilation is. It affects everything that can be affected by time dilation. Your character, your physics, timelines, things that basically rely on your tick. The global tick of the engine.